Everybody, how you doing today? Thank God for being here. Thank God for each of you coming out. I pray that uh, it will bless us today, that we'll be able to get to the Word kind of quickly, because I know we have um, an outreach to do later, and I don't intend to try to hold you too long, so pray for me. I don't forget any thoughts, but we can get through the whole message. All right, well, let us all be agreed. Pray with thank you. Amen. 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 If you have your Bibles, you can turn with me to Malachi, the third chapter. It should be a familiar passage of Scripture. <coughs> Malachi, the third chapter. And we're going to start at verse 1. Malachi 3 and 1. It just reads as following. It says, Behold, I will send my messenger, <clears throat> and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. But who may abide at the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi, and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord, as in the days of old, as in the former years. And I will come near to you to judgment, and I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers and against adulterers, and against false swearers, mm -hmm. and against those that oppress the hireling and his wages, right. the widow and the fatherless, right. and that turn aside the stranger from his right, and fear not me, saith the Lord of hosts. Mm -hmm. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Mm -hmm. And from there we want to just <clears throat> meditate on the word. In this particular passage, we got a little bit more ways to go. But as we read verses 1 through 6, we see that there was a promise made. And he said, I'm going to send my messenger. He said, he's going to prepare the way before me. And we know that he was speaking of John the Baptist because John went before Christ. And he began to tell him, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And he let them know that they need to make the crooked path straight. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. That was that forerunner. And he says that the Lord whom ye seek, the God who y'all are looking for, I'm going to show up at the temple. Mm -hmm. He said the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in. They knew that God had made a promise that there was going to be a new covenant in that day. And they yearned for that new covenant. They were looking for that Messiah. And in their mind, they were thinking that they were going to be reestablished as a great nation again and ruled again because they were in captivity. Mm -hmm. But God had another plan in mind. But he let them know that when he comes, he said, who may abide at the day of his coming? And who's going to be able to stand when he appears? See, Moses warned him and gave him a heads up when he said that there's another one. God's going to raise a prophet among your brethren. Like unto me, him ye shall hear. He let them know, I need to listen to this one. You don't listen to this one, you'll be in the world of trouble. He was letting them know Christ is coming. There's going to be a prophet and a messiah and a messenger coming that we have to give ear to. But those people weren't ready for him. He said that he's like a refiner's fire and a fuller's soap. Amen. He said he'll sit as a refiner and purifier. It's going to burn. Mm -hmm. It's going to get all the dross up out of you. He's going to be a purifier. He's going to get you right so you can offer an offering in righteousness. Amen. And he said that's when it's going to be pleasing in that day to get an offering in Judah. He said he'll going to be pleased then in Jerusalem. Verse 5, he let it be known that he's going to be coming to them with judgment. And be a swift witness against the sorcerers, right. those that practice witchcraft. Mm -hmm. We know the Bible says rebellion is as witchcraft. Mm -hmm. Those that were into the horoscopes and astrology and looking for answers, he's going to be a swift witness against them. Amen. He said, and against adulterers. Amen. Those that want to be um, in marriage and go out and step out on their marriage and break their vows and cheat. But they decide they're going to divorce and get them somebody else. He's going to be a swift witness against Amen. the adulterers. Amen. He said against the false swearers. Mm -hmm. These folks are on way back up. Those adulterers also go for those that are unfaithful to the gospel. Amen. Those that wanted to be a spouse to Christ. And they go out there and mess around with all these other idolatrous practices and false doctrines. That's right. They also qualify for those adulterers. Mm -hmm. He said the false swearers. 
out there speaking untruths mm -hmm. against those that oppress the hireling in his wages. All right. God is concerned with us. A lot of us talk about them jobs where we're suffering. Mm -hmm. Those that shortchange us and take advantage of us, right. and it seems like they want to work you more and pay you right. less. God said he's going to be a swift witness even Amen. against them. Amen. Thank you. We just need to claim it and believe it and wait for the judgment of God to come. Amen. Because he's going to be a swift witness against them. Amen. He said the widow and the fatherless. Those that are oppressing the widow and the fatherless. You don't have time for the children that don't have daddies. You don't want to spend time and help them or you want to lock them all up. And wonder why they have behavioral issues because they had no male authority figure in their life. Mm -hmm. God is going to be a swift witness against them right. and oppress those children. Amen. They just need direction and love to know that there's a God who created them for a purpose. Amen. He said those that turn aside the stranger. Mm -hmm. You see somebody poor. You see somebody in need. Mm -hmm. And you pass them over. You go the other way. Or you hope they ain't outside begging when you leave the grocery store because you don't want to give them your change. He's going to be a swift witness against people who are like that. Mm -hmm. And he said, and those that fear not me, those atheists and those ungodly men and women out there that deny our Lord and Savior, God is a swift witness against Amen. them. He said, for I am the Lord and I change not. Right. God did not change. We had a subject. The subject would be the king will return again soon and who may abide at the day of his coming. Mm -hmm. He's going to return and who's going to be able to abide at the day of his coming because that fire is going to come forth. When we go down to verse 14 in the same chapter, God was echoing the words that the people had said to him. And I pray that none of us are found in this place. But these people had got comfortable with the laws of God. They got comfortable with the presence of God. And after a while, they just did their own thing. In verse 14, he says, Ye have said it is vain to serve God. And what profit is it that we have kept his ordinance, and that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts? Hmm. They said it's vain. We've been serving God. We've been preaching this. We've been at the church of God mission all these years. And it just seems like we're not getting where we want to be. And maybe we feel like it's vain to serve God. Hmm. Maybe you feel like you're running in place. Well, I assure you, God is not the problem. All right. I can assure you, his word is not the problem. Mm -hmm. If you're not moving forward, don't look no further than yourself. Amen. He says, and now we call the proud happy. Yea, they that work wickedness are set up. Yea, they that tempt God are even delivered. You might look out on this world's landscape and see people prospering and getting rich. You see people growing, and you're like, man, the wicked are set up. Them people blaspheming, go wrong. They just getting away with it. You think they getting away? But oh, saints of God, ain't nothing getting by God. Ain't nothing getting by God. We look at verse sixteen. He said, "And they that feared the Lord and spake often one to another, the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and they thought upon His name. The Lord let it be known, I hear you. I'm not forgetting you. And those that meditate on me." Those that are constantly seeking me and speaking of me, a book of remembrance is written. Amen. See, sometimes people think God forgets. <laughs> God don't forget. I'm going to tell you something. I remember when I was younger, my uh, aunt had this dog. I couldn't stand that dog. It was a mean dog. And I remember we used to go to her house, and when nobody was out there, I tried to throw rocks and do stuff at that dog. I did not like that big dog. It's a dog with impingents. Man, named Sheba. Couldn't stand that dog. And you know, when she would tell us, y'all come on, y'all go play outside by the backyard, that dog remembered that I used to throw rocks. She didn't like it. It would try to come at me. Because that dog had a memory. I might have went home. I might have had a good time. been with my family. We might have left North Carolina and didn't come back for years. But when we came back around that dog, you know what happened? That dog remembered me for what I did to it. It had a memory. God is far greater. You better believe he has a memory for the wicked. They may think they can scoff and mock at him now, but God remembers every idle word they say. They think they're getting by, they're running free, but God got something up the road for them people. And we don't need to look at them and wonder why they're coming up and we're not. We just need to trust God for what he's going to do for us. Amen. We need to recognize that the wicked going to be there for a season, but he's going to move them right out of the way. Amen. He says, and they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts. And that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them, as a man spareth his own son. That saved him. God let it be known that he was going to spare us and that he was going to remember us. And all we have to do is be obedient and seek him to get the promises. When you look at Luke, the fourth chapter, we find where Christ 
fulfilled that promise. God said he was going to come to the temple. He told him he was coming. Luke 4 picks up after his temptation. So in verse 14. It says, And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him throughout all the regions about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, as his custom was. He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And when he was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, and to set liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? When Jesus came into that temple and he read it, he read that particular passage. It was already set up by God. And he let know that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He called me to preach and to do these things. And when he said it, they looked at him like, wait a minute, what just happened? <laughs> and the beauty of it is verse 21, because as they looked at him and he sat down, he told them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. He was fulfilling the promise of God that he was going to give the gospel to the poor. That he was going to heal the brokenhearted and set the captives free. Amen. God's mission has not changed since. Amen. The same Jesus that saves you out of your mess and from your sins has delivered you to go forth and preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, mm -hmm. to give deliverance to the captive, to set them at liberty that are bound. Amen. Because we live in a world that's bound today. We didn't get saved just for ourselves. We got saved so that we could begin to fulfill the mission of Christ. Amen. We're supposed to be going forth. I thank God to pass the mission 2018. I'm excited. I hope y'all ready to go to 2018. <laughs> we need to get out there in 2018. We need to be out there in 2017. But well, we definitely need to get out there in 2018. Because our world is in a world of hurt. It's a mess. It's a mess. Our world is in a world of mess. Amen, sister, and confusion. Yes, it is. You have teachers and people being fired because they refuse to call a child a different gender other than what they were born. Mm -hmm. They got fired. Mm -hmm. Young child confused, told the lady one day, I want to be a girl. I think I want to be a boy today. And she said, well, look, you a girl. We're going to call you a girl. You use the girl bathroom. And that woman got fired. And another one because they stood up for the truth. Mm -hmm. We live in Atlanta, which is a hotbed for the sex trafficking industry. We got a lot of these weirdos coming to our city wanting to pick up our children. Mm -hmm. And it's time for us to be a voice and cry against it. Amen. Too long have we played the back and been quiet. And, well, you know, you don't want to say too much in front of the children. Devil. You better let these children know because the devil is trying to teach them in the school. The devil is trying to put them on game now. Mm -hmm. While you waiting to tell them, they've already learned about all them dances and all that fastness at school. Mm -hmm. Open up your mouth and cry out like a trumpet. Warn your children and let them know. It's a messed up people. Mm -hmm. Amen. When you got coaches leaving state lines, running with young girls all the way as far as New York City, headed to Canada, we got a problem in America mm -hmm. today. And God's angry. Mm -hmm. It's wicked people. You have sisters struggling to pay bills. And you have these no good men. Tell them I know a way you can get money quick. Mm -hmm. So they trying to put them on to the X-rated genres mm -hmm. and put them in them films and have them in them clubs. Saints of God, it's time for us to cry out against Amen. it. It makes no sense that Atlanta is the hub for this foolishness. As many churches we got on every corner down here. Right. <laughs> in the Bible Belt well. But everybody ain't going to preach the truth. We need to be a lightning example Amen. and cry out against it. The perversion continues on to homosexuality. Atlanta becoming a hotbed promoting that. We need to cry out against it. Yes, yeah, you might get in trouble. <laughs> you might not keep that job. But God has something in store for you. You gotta ask yourself, who's gonna be able to abide at the day of his coming? You gonna be able to stand or you gonna run? I pray that you're able to stand. But the same mission Jesus gave. Is the same mission he's giving to us. Yeah. When we look at Matthew, the 10th chapter, Christ's 
spoke to his disciples. And he let it be known that these things were going to happen. If you look at verse 22, he said, You shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endures to the end shall be saved. We need to let that settle in. Ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Right. He didn't say you're going to be hated you know, once in a while. They're going to hate you because you're successful. Because you got that promotion. He said, you're going to be hated of all men. Why? For my name's sake. Right. Just because you're a Christian, they're not going to like you. He says, but he that endure to the end shall be saved. But when they persecute you in this city... Flee ye into another. He didn't say when they persecute you, you need to have a pity party. Mm -hmm. Just sit at home and cry, get you a box of tissues, some chocolates, and call all your friends and tell them how bad they treated you today. <laughs> oh, woe is me. Nobody knows the troubles I've seen. <laughs> and then after you feel sorry for yourself, sink into a depression, and take you a pill or get you something to drink that'll raise you about it. That ain't what he said to do. All right. He said when they persecute you in this city, you need to go into another. Mm -hmm. You need to continue the mission. Amen. You're not going to be a robot. It might hurt, allow it to heal. But the closer you walk with God and the more you allow His Spirit to take control of your life, the faster you can rebound and you can realize it's the devil that did this. When things happen against you, it's the Amen. devil that did it. And His purpose is to shut you down. And if you allow that sorrow or that pity or that situation to stop you, then He won. He won that fight. You got to take up your weapon. Take that shield of faith and say, uh-uh, oh, I'm continue on. Amen. So Christ told them that if you persecuted you in this city, you need to go on into another city. For verily I say unto you, ye should not have got gone over the cities of Israel until the Son of Man come. He says, the disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. You're not going, you're not going to get by. Jesus was crucified and killed. We're going to suffer too. It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master and the servant as his Lord. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more should they call them of his household? I found this to be true in my own life. When you get a preaching the truth of God's word, you tell them people they can live free from sin, they get mad. They start talking about you got a devil. Mm -hmm. Everybody got a sin. I was like, brother, they said Jesus is the chief of devil, so I ain't shocked enough you say about me. <laughs> Take the insult. <laughs> they gonna talk about you mm -hmm. because you're in a holy way. It's a straight and a narrow. If it was popular, it would have been a broad path. But because everybody don't want to get on it, it's a straight and narrow. Mm -hmm. And few there be that find it. Yeah. So he let it be known, fear them not therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, and hid that shall not be known. All right. What I tell you in the darkness that ye speak in, the, in light, mm -hmm. what ye hear in the ear, that preach on the housetops. Right. He's letting us know we need to sound the alarm. Amen. He said, don't be afraid of them. There ain't nothing covered that shall not be revealed. Some may think they slick and getting by, it's going to be revealed. That's right. Obviously, every idle word we got to give an account for. Right. I can even say stuff on the side and think I'm getting by with God. I'm going to have to give an account for. That's right. You might be at the job acting one way, kind of clowning and saying things you ought not say. You're going to give an account for it. And right. they ain't judgment. We're not going to get by. That's why he's a, a, a refiner's fire. That's why he purified us. Because God realized they're not going to get by. So I'm going to allow my son to purify them. Right. I'm going to allow these trials of life to burn their attitudes out of them mm -hmm. and burn the iniquities out of them so that they can fully measure to my word. Right. Because he's not going to use you half-baked. Right. Say, even the cake unturned half-baked. He's not going to be able to use you then. Right. Can't even put the icing on the thing. It's going to fall in on itself and be all messy. No, no, no. We're going to get fully baked by the fire of God around here. Right. We're going to make it. He said, if you hear it in the silence, go ahead and put it out there loud. We live in a time I thank God for the exposure of Hollywood. Not just Hollywood. I, I preached it before. From the White House to the Our House to the Crack House. Everybody need to be purified, holy, and saved. I'm glad for the exposure from politics. I'm glad they finding every senator, everyone that was taking advantage of their position and robbing people, uh, down to even our current situation with our mayors where they investigated. I'm thanking God for exposure. Because what's done in dark going to come to the light. That's right. I thank God for every measure of Harvey Weinstein, all, bring them all down. Every last one of them. Because mm -hmm. they have been promoting ungodliness in the television sets Amen. in front of our children and youth. 
Amen. They've been promoting uh, uh, adulterous movies for years now where you feel sorry for characters and you want to see her happy. So it's okay if she leaves Tom and go get Ted, but it's still a sin in the Bible. Amen. I'm so glad for the exposure of every last one of them Hollywood weirdos who have been running around doing that stuff because God has a day of exposure that he's bringing. We know the judgment is coming, but some of us are going to get exposed before then. Amen. You're going to come. You want to start in the dark, going to be brought to the light. You're not here. Right. You imagine you just snuck off and visited a place you had no business going. Imagine a giant spotlight just shining on you right now. That's what God going to do. Running off at nighttime. Everybody see what I'm going to sip on this. And the giant spotlight just like a bat signal. Boom! Right there on you. You've been exposed. It's time to put it away. I don't watch it on TV, but I got it on my phone. You've been exposed. Amen. God see you, and he know. We need a full exposure. We need a full exposure because the devil is cunning and he will trick you out your soul. That's why Christ said there's nothing that's going to be covered in the end. It ain't going to be revealed. Right. Right. Throughout the scripture you find that when Cain decided he wanted to kill his brother, he going to try to get sassy with God when he asked him, where's your brother? Am I my brother's keeper? He thought he was hit. You ain't hit. God created you. You silly. They said, his blood cried for me from the ground. You ain't here, you exposed. Cain got rejected. Aaron's sons decided they're going to go and offer some strange fire. They're going to, well, you know, because people, everybody want to be saved now, right? So we're going to worship God a different way. We ain't got to worship that way. Right. Y'all come on, all that holiness and type. I, I just don't do religion. Pure religion undefiled is this. Right. I'm going to learn the word. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't do religion. The Bible clearly speaks of religion in a good way. But these people want to offer strange fire to a holy God and think they're going to get by. Right. I don't care if TBN puts you on the channel, TBS, and everybody loving you, and they standing up waving, and you're getting all the money and walking on the money they offering you. Your day of exposure will come. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get by. If Aaron's sons are consumed for offering strange fire, you're going to get yours for your strange fire also. Amen. Right. Amen. God ain't going to let nobody get by. We're we'll going to Joshua, the seventh chapter. I want to share a story. I pray it encourages you. And saints, if you're going through, this story might take a while sometimes. Joshua, Joshua, the seventh chapter, starting at verse one. Situation that happened. And at this point, Joshua was leading Israel. But it says, but the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah took of the accursed thing, and the angel of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. Mm. And Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside Beth Haven, on the east of Bethel, and spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed Ai. And they returned to Joshua and said unto him, Let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai, and make not all the people labor thither, for they are but few. So Joshua sent them, they went, they said, man, look, we can take them with just a couple of thousand. Let them send all the people. I ain't but a few of them. We got this, Joshua. We can conquer this battle. So they went up thither, the people, about 3,000 men, and they fled before the men of Ai. Mm. And the men of Ai smote them about 30 and 6 men. Mm. And they chased them from before the gate, even unto Shebarim, and smote them in the going down. Wherefore, the hearts of the people melted and became as water. Mm -hmm. Everybody got scared because right. they lost that battle. A couple of men yeah. ran thousands in flight. And they're like, what is going on? Yeah. Right. And Joshua rent his clothes and fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord until the even time. And he and the elders of Israel put dust upon their heads. Mm -hmm. Sometimes things ain't going right within the congregation. Mm -hmm. And our pastor and the saints and the ministers might go to pray and wonder what is going on around here. Right. Something happening. This ought not to be because we know we're supposed to be winning in Christ Jesus and we know we're pleasing to God. Something going on. Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, wherefore hast thou at all brought this people over Jordan to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us? Would to God that we had been content and dwell on the other side of Jordan. O Lord, what shall I say when Israel turneth their back before their enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it and shall environ us around and cut off our name from the earth and what would thou do unto thy great name? Joshua's like, Lord, what's going to happen with all our enemies here about all these things going on with us? 
all these calamities that, 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 that fell upon us, now they're going to all rise up against us and they're going to come try to wipe us out. What's going to be of your great name, oh God? Right. Boy, Joshua, he was just crying out because he knew he was right. Verse 10, And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up, wherefore lies thou thus upon thy face. God said, Go on and get up. Israel had sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken of the accursed thing, and have also stolen and dissembled also, and they have put it even among their own stuff. Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies, because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you anymore, except you destroy the accursed from among you. Mm -hmm. See, God has a standard. Mm -hmm. Probably churches today, they don't want to lift up a standard. Mm -hmm. They just want to accept everything. And some things are accursed things. You have people painting their faces all white, looking like mobs, looking like ghosts, hopping around, dancing and frolicking with a bunch of robes and stuff. And we know that, that mining was of the devil's dance, that it was never something that was considered holy. Right. You look up the middle evil and the dark ages when they were painting their faces. It was clouds and wickedness. A lot of sorcery and things going on. It was not supposed to be part of God's service. Amen. Amen. But men have brought the accursed thing within. They've accepted the accursed thing. And now all of a sudden they want to call it holy when it's not. Amen. You've had people who decided that, you know, we got to get these young people and get with it. So we're going to go get us some holy hip hop as if there ever was such a thing. Right. We'll make some holy hard rock and heavy metal. Right. <laughs> gonna have some holy emo music also. No, no, no. Gonna make every, you can't sanctify that stuff. Amen. They said that which is crooked can't be made straight. All right. It was founded upon rebellion. It started with rebellion. What was the purpose? Parents just don't understand to rebel against your parents. Forget the police to rebel against the authorities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was the foundation. Reveling. Don't think I'm bad. No boxing, no karate. I just like put boogie in your body, promoting partying and lively reveling. Right, right. There was nothing holy about it. Amen. But men have brought in a cursed thing. Mm. He says, up and sanctify the people. God wants sanctification. He wants them set apart. And say, sanctify yourselves against tomorrow, for thus saith the Lord God of Israel. There is an accursed thing in the midst of thee. Mm -hmm. O Israel, thou canst not stand before thine enemies until you take away the accursed thing from among you. Right. The reason why you will not live holy or live right or free from sin is because you got to put the accursed thing away from you. Amen. I don't care what the accursed thing is. It could be a false, damnable doctrine. Right. They could be speaking in tongues without interpretations. Mm -hmm. The whole congregation can get up doing it. And we know the Bible says if you do it, it needs to be at the most by three and one be an interpreter. But we'll overlook the scriptures and try to say they have a spiritual experience. That's an accursed thing. And that's why them people can't stand. Amen. That's why they can't stand. That's why them preachers keep getting caught messing with other women. Right. They can't stand because they won't accept the truth of God's word. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's why the men are struggling in their marriages. Because they're under false men who are lusting after women, and then they get to the lusting, and they wonder what's wrong with them. Because they're sitting in the camp, and you can't stand. All right. All right. You have to put it to death. Amen. You have to put it to death. Come on. You could be the death of your brother or sister next to you. Come on, amen. Because you won't die to yourself. Right. Amen. Some of them may struggle in their walk and never make it because you refuse to die to yourself. Mm. Wives. Try their best to raise the children in the fear and admonition of the Lord. Lord help us. The daddy don't want to get right. Mm. Do you not know that those children are going to follow your footsteps? Right. Because the Bible lets you know as the arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Who was holding the arrows? The daddy. Mm -hmm. So the direction you go, you stirring them in the direction. Think about how many we see in jail and prison. The first thing they say, I never knew my dad. Mm -hmm. My dad wasn't there. Mm -hmm. Well, my dad went to church, but he was a hypocrite. He wasn't for real about church, man. I, I don't take that church no serious. You are leading mm -hmm. them on a path of eternity. And it's going to go somewhere. That's it's right. going to go somewhere. Right, brother. It may be the sister don't have time for the kids. Because mm -hmm. the internet is calling. There's okay. so much shopping to do, right? Right. I ain't talking about just Christmas. I mean year round. Just yeah. shopping. I always got to get more. New hairstyle got to be done. You know, run the man raggedy, make him feel like he ain't worth nothing because he can't provide everything that the Kardashians and all these other people have. Mm -hmm. And them children grow up and they see that. 
I don't want to be like my daddy. I want a rich man. You setting them up on the course for failure. Mm -hmm. If you don't raise them in fear and admonition of the Lord. Amen. People will not be able to stand. If they're going to allow the cursed thing to be in their midst. You're going to have to put right. it away. You're going to have to ask God to give you strength and fortitude to put it away. Amen. We're going to look at the outcome of Mr. Aiken. Because he messed the children of Israel up. He says, in the morning, therefore, you should be brought, verse 14, according to your tribes. And it shall be the tribe which the Lord taketh shall come according to the families thereof. And the family which the Lord shall take come by household. And the household which the Lord shall take come man by man. What they did, they broke that down. They said, we're going to bring the tribe. As you bring the tribes, we bring it up by household. As we bring it by household, we bring it by individual, man by man. See, what's done in the dark don't come to the light. He's going to make it manifest. Trust me, if you, you living right and somebody in your house ain't, you just stay holy. God going, and you going house by house, he going to deal with that individual. Going to get an answer. He said, we're going man by man. And it shall be that he that is taken with the accursed thing shall be burnt with fire. He and all that he had, because he has transgressed the covenant of the Lord and because he has wrought folly in Israel. So Joshua rose up early in the morning and brought Israel by their tribes. And the tribe by Judah of Judah was taken. And he brought the family of Judah, and he took the family of the Zaharites, Zaharites, and he brought the family of the Zaharites, man by man, and Zabdi was taken, and he brought his household man by man, and Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, was taken. So he went all the way down, man by man. They got the old Achan. And Joshua said unto Achan, My son, give, I pray thee, glory to the Lord God of Israel, and make confession unto him. And tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. This is a place that a lot of us need to really be careful in. When you deal with true saints of God and they ask you a question, you need to make sure you get into God's answer. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So you look at it, and this is from Old and New Testament. You look at Peter, and he had a couple of people come up there and tell me they sold all they had to give to the Lord. He said, Did you really give all your possessions? Yeah, we gave all of them. Them people fell dead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because they were lying before the people of God. Uh -oh. See, there's a level of severity that's missing because so many false prophets have tricked us to think we could just say anything before God and we ain't going to get it too. Mm -hmm. But when you're dealing with a true person filled with the Holy Spirit walking in his truth, you, you best tell them the truth and not lie before them. God got something for you. Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and thus and thus have I done. And when I saw among the spoils of the goodly Babylonian garment and 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels weight, when I coveted them and took them, I covered, coveted them and took mm. and took them, and behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent and the silver under it. That man said, as I was seeing the spoils mm. and I saw the Babylonian garments, that's when we go wrong. Always looking at what everybody else got. Mm. He saw the Babylonian garments. He said, man, this looks nice. Look at the silver and the gold. My, my. He said he coveted them and he took them. My. And he thought it was hid because it was under his tent. And in his tent, he thought it was all right in the earth. All right. So Joshua sent messengers and they ran into the tent. And behold, it was hid in his tent and the silver under it. And they took them out in the midst of the tent and brought them unto Joshua and unto all the children of Israel and laid them out before the Lord. And Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, and the silver, and the garment, and the wedge of gold, and his sons, and his daughters, and his oxen, and his asses, and his sheep, and his tent, and all that he had, and they brought them unto the valley of Achor. And Joshua said, Why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones, and burned them with fire, after they had stoned him with stones, and raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger, wherefore the name of that place is called the Valley of Achor unto this day. God doesn't play. That's right. That was the judgment of God. He had to go for it. Mm -hmm. He caused all Israel to fall. Lives were lost because right. of his folly. Right. People suffering right now can't find Jesus. We're trying to lead them to the truth. And because some may not want to get their act together, you hinder the gospel. Right. God got something coming for that. He thought it was hidden just because he was in the midst of the camp. The Bible said the sin is a reproach to God's people. Right. It's offensive. Go to 1 Peter. We're going to move on a little bit. We're going to 1 Peter. 
the fourth chapter, verse 17. It says, For the time has come, the judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and sinner appear? All right. When I hear this verse, it gives me an awareness that I want to make sure that I'm walking up right. It makes you want to straighten up. It should. The judgment must begin at the house of God. We in the church ain't. We want to straighten up and be right. He said, but if it first begin at us, what shall be of them that obey not the gospel of God? That latter part of that verse gives me a mission. It gives me a fire to want to see souls saved. What's going to be the end of those that obey not the gospel of God? If we don't get this word out and help these people, they're not going to have a chance. Right. They're not going to have a chance. He said, the righteous, and all the good we do, the righteous scarcely be saved. All that we do to be holy, we barely make it in. He said, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? They're not going to have a chance. When you see a young person disrespecting their elder, it should hurt you to the heart because they're not going to have a chance. When you see the atheist running around talking crazy about God, the Bible said a fool is said in his heart there is no God. It should drive a compassion to want to see him get saved because he's not going to make it. That young lady, did everybody want to celebrate and have that baby shower for her? And you know she a fornicator and had a baby out of wedlock. Guess what? You know in your heart she's not going to make it. Mm -hmm. right. It should be a fire. A drive to want to do the work of the Lord to try to right. save them. Amen. Because without you opening your mouth and being the word and yeah. showing them the truth, they're not going to make it. That's right. It's a serious thing. Mm. It's a serious thing. Judgment starting with us. And then he says in Hebrews 12 and 29 that our God is a consuming fire. That's right. He's not a play with. He's a consuming fire. Revelation, he made it very plain. He said, you know what, I'd rather you be hot or cold. You gonna be on fire for me? I want you to be hot. You need to be hot, ready. I don't want you to be cold. But if you're gonna be cold, go ahead and be cold. But the worst case scenario is if you be lukewarm. You're not all together sold out for, them, but you ain't all together done with this world either. You just kind of in between in that little little comfortable place. You think God said I will spew you out of my mouth. He don't want no dealings with you when you lukewarm. He needs you on fire. Right. He needs you hot. Old oh, saints used to sing, Lord, I'm running, trying to make a hundred, ninety-nine and a half, just won't do. I didn't understand that song when I was younger. <laughs> I get it now. Oh, we thinking ninety-nine and a half. I gave a whole lot. I gave ninety-nine and a half. I'm ninety-nine point five. I'm almost there. Boy, the old saints said that ain't gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> it's to come up high. Ninety-nine and a half won't do. It's either all or none. So you might as well go on and make your mind up in the valley of decision now that I'm giving all for Jesus Amen. Christ. A hundred and percent. I would say 110, but 100, so obviously 99 and a half will do it hard enough to get 100. Just give 100 percent so that we can make this journey. Amen. But if we go to 1 Corinthians 6, chapter verse 9, it's very sobering because we just read how the judgments of God are going to begin at his house. Paul really just confirms it, letting us know. And this is a good memory verse for those who evangelize. You got to tell folks the truth. Hey, you can go 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. When they start talking about everybody going to heaven, I, I heard some foolishness. They're talking about Marilyn Manson. He, he, he probably been in heaven now. All these people that you know ain't living right, never profess Jesus going to heaven anyway. No, 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 no. It says, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. All right. They're not going to be there. It says, be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, mm -hmm. nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, mm -hmm. nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Right. He let it be known clearly, they're not going to get in. Right. None of them. And people need to recognize that, hey, you know what? This is real. You know, if they're, if they're in this stuff, they're not going to make it. We need to tell them that truth and love them enough that they can make it the right way. Amen. See, they're not going to get there. When we look at Isaiah, the 11th chapter. Go to Isaiah, chapter 11. I just got a couple more verses. I'm going to try not to hold y'all long. But we're going to stay within... 
our text. Let me go all the way through first. Um, Isaiah the 11th chapter, starting at verse 1. It says, And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, and the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. So he let you know there's going to be a, a, a rod that's going to come out of the stem of Jesse. It's going to be a branch. And out of that branch, it's going to grow roots. Mm -hmm. See, Jesus is that vine, and we're connected. Amen. He said, as we connected, we're going to bring forth fruit. Amen. If we disconnect it, we cut off and throw it into the fire. Mm -hmm. It says, and shall make him of quick understanding and the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, right. neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. See, this is what is coming. You're not going to go by what he's seeing or what he's hearing. Okay. It says, but with righteousness shall he judge the poor Amen. and reprove iniquity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and the breath of his lips shall slay the wicked. Hmm. Christ spoke that word. That rod came forth. And boy, the wicked folk got mad. They couldn't stand it says, and righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. So we know that when Christ came, and he began to preach the truth, that he was able to rebuke the wicked, not by what he saw, not by what he heard, but with righteousness. And guess what he told us? He said, judge not. At least he'd be judged in one place. And people hold that and say, see, we're not supposed to judge. If you look at that same book, he comes back and says, judge ye, not after the appearance, but judge ye with righteous judgment. Amen. He gave saints permission to do what? To judge. Amen. Not that we're putting people in hell, but the judgment is letting them know the truth and the right. judgments of God so that we can discern between them that serve him and them that don't. Yeah. We can discern between what is holy and that which is unholy. What is considered sacred and blessed, and that which is considered wretched and profane. Amen. He gave us that authority. So, saints of God, don't be afraid to use the authority God gave you. When you get before family, when you get before friends, mm -hmm. you get before co-workers and strangers, we are to bring forth the judgments of God. Amen. Amen. When Christ spoke and said that the, the, the breath of his lips shall slay the wicked. He was telling them some hard truths. And when you look at some of the things he said to them, because sometimes people, you know, they, they try to, well, you know, Jesus, you know, you know, love, you know, love is the main thing. I do believe we need to love people, yes. Love is very important. But Jesus told them something. He was like, you tell that old fox. When they spoke to Harry, he called that man a fox. He told them, he said, you know, these vipers, serpents. So you're of your father, the devil. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes you got to square off and let the devil know you know that's who he is talking to that person. Because right. folk love this quote, well, we are all children of God. No son, no man. We are not all his children because all of us ain't obedient. The Bible Amen. says Now, if you're born again, you're a child of God. Amen. But if you're out living in sin, you're a child of the devil. That's right. A lot of people don't like to say that. Let's tell these folk the truth. Right. If you're not led by the spirit of God, you live by a spirit, and it ain't God, it's the devil. Amen. Ain't but two choices, A and B. There's no C option in this. So they need to know you either serve God or you don't. And we need to love them enough to tell them that truth. Because a lot of them will stay lost if you don't. Amen. They don't know to put the accursed thing away. Amen. They don't know that our God is a consuming fire and that the judgment is coming. Mm -hmm. I believe as saints of God, we need to make it our business to love them, but to tell them the truth. Amen. So as we read on, it says in verse 10, And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people, an example, a sign. To it shall the Gentiles seek, and its rest shall be glorious. Amen. So the word of God lets us know that, that there's going to be a root of Jesse in that day, which is when Christ came, that he's going to be an ensign, an example, a standard to the people, and the Gentiles are going to seek to him also. I thank God that he did not leave them Gentiles out, even in the Old Testament. He let me know they're going to look to him also. Because God wanted to draw us all into his kingdom. From there, we want to go into his rest. Because he says that his rest shall be glorious. If you go to Matthew 11. Matthew 11 chapter. Starting at verse 27. 
Jesus speaking, he says, All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father, neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. When you read that, he let know all things were delivered to him. He let it be known that no man can know the Son, the Father, but by the Son. They can't know the Son, but by the Father. But it's the Son that reveals it to them. <laughs> Sounds like a paradox to you read it. You're like, whoa, wait a minute. But Jesus said in another place, that no man come to the Father except by me. You can't get to my Father unless you come by me. There's a movement right now trying to remove Jesus' name out of the minds of people. They don't want you to say it on the television sets. Uh, I saw there was an interview recently, a person that gave, and they said Jesus in the interview. I forgot it was ABC or CNN or one of those main channels. And they muted it out, and they ended the broadcast early. Because mm -hmm. the person started lifting up the name Jesus. Mm -hmm. There are <coughs> false religions coming up, and they all cry out against, guess what name? Jesus. They want you to stop proclaiming them. They don't want you to talk about Christ and Christmas and Jesus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't want you to tell people Jesus loves you. You know, they are really on a hunt and against the name of Jesus. And we know that demons tremble at that name. And that you can, there's no salvation offered under any other name under heaven. Whereby men are called to be saved, but by the name of Jesus. Amen. So we need to make sure we're doing our job promoting and uplifting his name so the devil knows we're not going to bow down to that foolishness. Right. But Jesus said in verse 28, said, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. What Christ is saying is, all y'all that are laboring with sin, all y'all that are heavy burden, you're going through, life ain't working the way you want it to work. It's problems after problems, calamity after calamity. He said, if you come unto me, I will give you rest. Mm -hmm. Bible said, ain't no rest for the wicked. <laughs> when you're out there doing wrong, you had that chip on your shoulder. You don't get no rest when you're out there doing wrong. Amen. It seems like somebody always, you know, over your shoulder, you feel that. That, that anxiety building up when you got to do something, you feel that nervousness because there's no rest for the wicked. You, you need to rest in Jesus Christ. He said, if you come unto me, I will give you rest. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls, Amen. for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. When you see a yoke, that big old thing they put around that oxen's neck, that thing heavy. Y'all, the chains is hooked to, to a plow, and it's pulling, it's pulling, it's just digging the That's a heavy yoke. Mm -hmm. And when you see them having to carry chariots and pull people, all, my, all kind of weight and things, that's a heavy yoke. Jesus said, my yoke is easy, mm -hmm. and my burden is light. Amen. He already carried it for you at Calvary if you just receive him and believe him. Amen. And you walk and do what he Amen. said. Do. Your burdens can be lifted today. Yes. The sin can end today. People don't know, I want to come to Jesus, you know, when I get right, when I stop. No, no, no. You need to come to him with the burden so that he can take it from you. Mm -hmm. Then you can take the light burden. <laughs> he did not want you to get yourself cleaned up first. He wants you to come as you are so that he can help you get the clean Amen. right. Amen. Because he's a refiner and a purifier. And a refiner and a purifier takes time to clean whatever it possesses because it's a value to him. Mm -hmm. The refiner and the purifier takes the time That's right. to burn it out and to cleanse it up mm -hmm. because it's valuable to him. Right. Amen. You are valuable to God. Amen. You count in Jesus' eyes. Mm -hmm. So he's cleansing you and allowing you to go through and purging you Amen. because you're going to be made in something for his glory. Praise God. You're valuable to him. Amen. He wants to use you. Wants to use you. you can't use stuff that ain't been tried by fire to break on you. First side of pressure, it's going to crumble. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens when somebody gets worried by the wayside. They get up, they go, and first time troubles and things come, the thorns of life come, they crumble. But we want to make sure that we stay in the fire and grow in grace so that we can be used by him. Know that he loves you and has a greater purpose for you, saints. Amen. Our last two scriptures, we're going to Hebrews, the fourth chapter. Hebrews 4. It says, let us, start at verse 1, let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left off of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. Hmm. We don't want to fall short of the promise of our rest. Right. right. I know these jobs can be stressful. I know bills are <coughs> I know money tight. 
We in December, everybody worry about a gift. I have to get a gift of a dog and love to one another and recognize we just don't have. It's okay. That's the only thing. You know, he covered by the blood. He blessed you the way, you know, the meek and lowly. You don't even trip if you don't have. But if you're high minded, you trusted in these world's riches. Boy, you hate this time of year. You might get low when the money ain't there. He says, For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in their yeah. inheritance. For we which have believed do enter into rest. Yes. See, if you believe the word and you believe in God, you enter into his rest. You have that's a right. peace that's that surpasses right. all understanding. Amen. But if you don't believe, that's when you try to fix it yourself. Mm -hmm. Man, I got to get this. Man, I, I know, man, God good. God can do it. I can get this money. Though. I got to figure something out. You're scratching your head. You're losing your mind because you're not resting in him. Right. Amen. <laughs> you better enter into his rest. Bills don't get paid when they get paid. <laughs> He says, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Mm -hmm. For he spoke in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise. And God did rest the seventh day from all his works. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest. Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein. And they to whom it was first preached enter not in because of unbelief. Mm -hmm. Again, he limited a certain day, saying in David, Today, after so long a time, as it is said, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. We've been preaching the call of salvation. Some of y'all have been hearing the word. Some of y'all know the word. Been brought up in the church and still don't want to be saved. I don't know what the problem is. Oh my. I'll, let me tell you. The devil will make a punching bag of you and will beat you across your head all day. You're going to keep taking the licks and keep going back. Mm -hmm. At some point, you gotta cut the cord of sin. Right. You know the Bible made it very clear when I was a child. I was a child. I spoke as a child. But when I came, a man, I put away foolish things. Mm -hmm. You gotta grow up. You gotta decide: Do I really want to be saved, the right with God, and let this world go? Mm -hmm. Ask yourself: What are you holding on for? Is it worth going to hell? Is it worth burning in eternity forever? Death could come by our way at any given moment. Is it worth going to hell? Mm. That that adulterous affair is it worth going to hell for? Right. Mm. That job that wants to take you away from being what God called you to be. You're supposed to be ministering or preaching or the gift that helps or helping, but you're too busy because you're working a job. Is it worth you going to hell for? Mama. That paycheck at the end of the week. 